Preston James has stopped by for his monthly visit. I wish we could have him on more often, but at least we get to spend one night a week with him and hear some of the things he has to say. This man has a level of understanding and a depth of knowledge into the dark, secret world of, uh, well, we'll just call it the cult and control, mass mind manipulation, social engineering, programming, the works. Preston knows it. He's been there. He's got incredible sources and always read his material. It's on the left side of the home page right there in his columnist box. Hello, my friend. How are you? Welcome back. Hi, Brett. I, I want to thank you for having me on, Jeff, but I want to give you a compliment, too, because, as you know, I play a little game with you trying to send you articles hoping that you won't have them yet, and oh. very rarely <laughs> do I ever succeed. So I don't know what your sources are, but you're on top of everything. Well, I've got some some handful of wonderful people who, who watch and send things that they know matter, and so that gives uh, all of us a great edge, and, and those people know who they are, and I'm very grateful to them. It's a lot of work. Uh, it's... It's sometimes, honestly, it is so much pressure on, on yours truly, and I, I can handle it, it's okay, uh, that I, I literally sit here and I sometimes can't type well. I can't, my mind is four or five stories ahead, and I can't, I have to stop and back way up, rewind, and go A, B, D, L, R. I have to find the keys and slow down. Uh, it's just too much. It's, it's it's crazy. Anyway, that's the times, sign of the times. And next year, if we can just get Trump sworn in, next year is going to be one of the most incredible years in American and world political history, Western world political history, period. Well, it's a fact that um, it's fa- very fast moving, and and uh, the establishment, and when I say establishment, I don't just mean the... the uh, Democrats, I mean the Republicans and the Democratic Party leaders and the major media, of which they all work for the uh, satanic pedophile cabal, whether whether they know it or not, only the higher Whether they know it or not, absolutely. And, of course, they, they were stunned. They were, they were convinced, they were told it was wrapped up, that uh, Hillary was the establishment candidate. And, of course, they, they believed that she was sick and she was in a limited role and that she would get yeah. in and... Yeah. And that then they could easily push you around or do whatever whatever they wanted That's anyway. Right. So, you know. did you see the video of uh, of of she being embraced by Chelsea, who ran up and hugged her when they told her, "You've got it, you've won," on election night? Did you see that video? Well, and I Bill, saw part of it where Bill, Bill was jumping up and down. Bill comes walking in from screen left, uh, wanting to be included in the hug. No, I don't feel sorry for him. She was. She wouldn't even. Look at him. She was hugging Chelsea, and the, the guy stopped short, Bill Clinton, rapist, and started literally, I think he made three jumps, little jumps, little hops up yep. in the air, yep. like a little kid would do, a child, happy little child. This was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And eventually, <laughs> he was jumping up and down, and Hillary had to look over at him, and she took her left arm, which was wrapped around Chelsea, and twisted her hand toward Bill and let him hold her four fingers. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. It was sick. But you know, the mm-hmm. talk in D.C. is is that she's angry at him and she blames uh, him, Podesta, and all these people that were running her campaign for her loss. And she, she can't take you know responsibility for the, herself, the fact that she was sick. She lied about so many things. She, made she can't. Mistakes. Okay, now you're hearing. See, you've got sources. I don't know. I don't know what the inside yeah. the, the well, beltway. Bill, you know what Bill did though. Yeah, he's 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 like the vice president. You know, they don't let they 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 uh they, they put the uh, bridle on on the vice president because he was going out and it, when people would ask him questions, yeah. you know, he would he would tell the truth. Yeah, I mean, he's that kind of yeah. guy, and he and he caused all kinds of trouble, especially yeah. when he. He didn't lose. He didn't lose the election for. Look, the the, the truth be told, and we always try. She lost the election. People didn't like her. She didn't strike a a responsive chord in the psyche of America. They didn't like her arrogance. They didn't like her laugh. They got sick of seeing her teeth hanging out, smiling. They got sick of seeing all the makeup. They just didn't like her. She's not likable. She's evil. And I think well, that yeah, that they, is they not to be missed. To no. But, but the biggest blowing block was the 
upper middle class white women and yes, the, uh, yes, liberal yes, black yes. women. But I, I, uh, I, I was surprised to find out that 70% of the Chicanos and the blacks in uh, Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana voted for Trump. Even gang bang leaders and drug gang leaders Amazing. voted for Trump. And when they asked him why, they didn't care about any of the privileges or anything. All they said is, the man's promising us jobs. We want jobs. One, we one want, gang, le- yeah. gang leader said he'd rather have a job in a, a, a Ford assembly plant or a GM assembly plant than selling drugs. You know. You know what it is? It's all about dignity. And Donald Trump offered them, promised them a chance at dignity. And that's what right. they want. What did Hillary promise? Same old crap. And I'll tell you this. I believe this. I'll believe this from here on out. We dodged World War III. I think that Vladimir Putin had decided this is the end. I'm not going to budge anymore. That's it. No more diplomacy. If they screw with us, we're going to take them out. And I think he could start still with NATO piled up all along the western Russian border. And within law, by the way, the United Nations Charter allows any country that is being eminently and imminently threatened to militarily remove that threat if it's near their borders. So he could well, go in there and take more. them out. Isn't, isn't there a rule that if there's sanctions brought against them, that that's an act of war too? Absolutely. Sure it is. And economic actions constitute an act of war. That's right. So I don't, I think, I'm not ruling anything out. He's got Iskander missiles there in Kaliningrad, and I think he could turn those loose and take out a hell of a lot of NATO's command and control, take out their missiles, and he wouldn't have to cross his own border or send even any aircraft over. Those Iskander missiles are, are awesome. And then he's got the caliber, tom, the cruise missile, makes the tomahawk look like a rock. Uh, these, those caliber missiles are hypersonic, and they... Oh. They're not two stage, right? Oh, they're incredible. Yeah. yeah they're incredible. Yeah, so <laughs> once the second stage cuts in, they can't stop them, I guess. No. They don't get them right away when they're taking off. No, they got to give them in boost phase and it, that isn't going to happen. It's too quick. But Jeff, I heard that yesterday there's been a number of uh, articles in Haaretz and in various art, I believe RT and uh, in other online journals that uh Israel sent some uh, missiles from some of the aircraft into uh, outside the airport at Damascus. That's claiming right. That they, now, is that first of all, is that story accurate? I, I well, I, I wasn't there. I can't tell you, but I believe it to be accurate. RT is a very good source, and they did strike targets outside of Damascus. But today, they admitted it, and they said we did it to stop the the flow of weapons of mass destruction to Hezbollah. That's what their excuse was. Aren't they playing with fire? Because of course they are. Yeah. They've said there's something like a hundred thousand missiles pointed at Israel. I don't know how many. A lot, tens and tens of thousands of missiles of varying sizes, sophistication, and firepower, all pointed at Israel. But they don't. You know what they, Preston? Here's the big deal. And I tip my hat again to terrible Tim Refat. This guy, ten, twelve years ago, longer, was saying, Cobalt sixty equalizes it and then some for anybody if they were to lob a couple of three cobalt missiles into Israel that's all they'd have to do that's the end of it it's poisoned for what a thousand years something like that it's it's over it's done it's finished but you know they have the perimeter you know all about that right yeah Yeah. and they call it the dead hand yep and the, the original dead hand missiles back in the 50s when they set it up had cobalt um casings on them well, that's and probably what the Iranians have. They don't need nuclear missiles. Cobalt fifty nine, which turns to cobalt yep. sixty when it explodes. That's that's all you need. And then the but Russians have that that magnificent torpedo. It's actually like a small sub. It's launched from a big sub. It's a torpedo, and it has a range of six thousand miles, and it can travel three thousand feet deep at one hundred and ten miles an hour. And you can you can find that if you had to. And right. if, it, if it explodes, if it explodes offshore, it will generate a tsunami, 900 feet tall, which will go inland 30, 40 miles and wipe out everything. Depending well, on the on, yeah, on the uh, megatonnage of the warhead, of course. But they can like do our, that. Our, our Mark IVs that are nuclear tip. But I was going to say, there's 
other talk that the Russians have another torpedo. Actually, they, they had three advanced torpedoes. Um, the last one is, is supersonic underwater, and the, the second one um, was would actually emit high-powered gas out the, the nose of it to create a, uh, a vacuum. That's called around. cavitation. Exactly. <clears throat> However, yeah. the, the last one, if the rumors are accurate, it creates an anti-gravity field on the front of the missile, so it's actually it's actually passing through the molecules of the water, and that one that one goes actual supersonic, something like well, eleven hundred. Uh, I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if you're completely correct. I do know the first one I discussed, hundred and ten, hundred and fifteen miles an hour. That one has the range six thousand right. miles, and it it is a cobalt cladding issue in terms of the whatever the nuclear payload is they just wrap it in in cobalt 59 and upon ignition it turns into cobalt 60 goodbye imagine a cobalt 60 tsunami 900 feet tall going in 20 miles it's going it, to everything is wiped out scrubbed and then cobalt is left behind it's a total well, it, but it spreads though that it, it, it's something about the cobalt that it's oh, you get red. picked up in the wind, in precipitation, yeah. uh, evaporation will take it up into the clouds, into the moisture. That's right. Totally right. Well, they've never really tested it. You know, I mean, I, I always wonder if they're exaggerating the toxicity of it. or But nobody seems to contest the fact that it's the most toxic casing possible for any nuclear Nobody device. will touch it. No, just do your research, folks. It's right there. Cobalt 60. Cobalt 59. Cobalt 60. Yeah, that's it. They have the weaponry. The Russians will, would never lose uh, another war. They won't. They've got too much technology. And remember the Chelyabinsk meteorite coming in. Yeah. It was 18,000 yeah. miles an hour headed they toward a very yeah. secure area of Siberia. And if you watch the videos, you can see it. Uh, the Russians hit it, came up from underneath and behind it, looked like a pencil, went right through that meteor and broke it into pieces. Now, was that a particle beam weapon? I don't think so. I think it was a solid object. Could have been titanium, could have been anything, but it was, it, uh, I didn't read it as a plasma weapon. I read it as a solid object. My eyes, that's what my eye told me anyway. It, but, whatever uh, it was, it hold that meteor, boom, and broke it into pieces. And you could see it come out the front side of it. Yep. So yep. maybe it was a plasma shaped, uh, looks like a pencil. Maybe it was plasma. I don't know. But whatever it was, it caught up with, overtook, and destroyed that meteor. And that was probably an automatic response. It was coming in so quickly, I don't think they had to get permission to release that. Can, can you imagine the sophistication of the tracking equipment to follow something that fast coming in? No. I mean, it's a, they've got it. They're way ahead of us. Obama has, for eight years, uh, obviously degraded the American military and has, uh, look what we've spent. Preston, we've spent a trillion dollars on the F-35 Turkey, one of the most useless jet airplanes uh, in its time ever. Just a piece of garbage. Now, the Israelis are buying them up, probably pennies on the dollar, and what they'll do is what they always do is they'll fix them. They'll, yeah, they'll put their own avionics in it. That's right. Yeah. But, Jeff, yeah. you know, I've heard rumors the last few years that NATO is an absolute mess. That their, their command are nothing but a bunch of pedophiles, or and uh, they're all corrupted. It. And, I believe it. Sure. And they're they're all honey trapped, and they're an absolute mess. And they and they've stolen so much money, they're not combat ready. They they yeah they no. go on you know they, they do these exercises and whatever, but they're a joke, an absolute joke. And all they are is a money magnet. They just well, spread Trump corruption. Trump needs to uh, drain the NATO swamp to pull us out. Uh, if Europe wants to set up an EU army, let them. We don't need to be in NATO. We need, don't need to be paying for NATO's costs. We need to get out of the United Nations, which we won't do, unfortunately. We've been paying for the UN, the majority of the UN, ever since it was conceived and implemented on this planet. Uh, it needs to be, uh, taken down several notches at the least. But we're, we're on the doorstep of some phenomenal changes that if Trump can survive and, and become sworn in, uh, and I think he, what he'll do is he'll do a, he'll do his tweet news conferences and, and let, let all those pretty, <laughs> pretty faces, uh, just go and, uh, and ruminate and, and grumble. Little Chucky e. Todd and, uh, 
<laughs> uh, all, all of them. There's so many of them. I you think of the MSNBC crew, and they they were all so arrogant and sure of themselves. How and Rachel Maddow and they, oh, yeah. they and they just had to eat garbage, and it was it but was. Jeff, amazing. you think they made? You think Trump has made a decision who he's going to let into the White House press room? I there'd probably be a handful of people at the most. <laughs> Breitbart, his people will be right up in front, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I mean, it's possible that he's not going to let these CNN and I don't MSN think he should hold White House press conferences except on rare occasions. I think he should continue to use Twitter and yeah. talk to the people instantly. You know, well, they, when he yeah, does they, that, they he takes it. He controls the media headlines just by putting in a two sentence tweet. <laughs> yeah, they ask him to stop using Twitter. Some of the big shots and. And he said, when you start telling the truth, I might. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's wonderful. Well, so far, all indications are good. Now, Secretary of State remains a, uh, an issue. <clears throat> Petraeus, they're still talking about Romney having the inside edge. I don't know why, but I'm reading that. may not be true. And then they're talking about Dana Rohrabacher, who is eminently qualified to be a superb Secretary of State. That's the man that uh, that Trump should have. I don't know what kind of pressure uh, he's being given by the Mormons and the Mormon uh, cabal and, and that group, but there's some clear pressure being put on him to uh, let Romney in there. And what, what are these people going to do? If Romney gets in, what is he thinking? He's thinking 2020 or, or 2024. He's thinking White House. He wants to be a president. I guarantee it. Many, you can see Nikki Haley. What's she thinking? UN ambassador, the first woman president. I'm telling you, these people are easy to read. That's true. That is true. But what can the what can the establishment do to knock him off course once he's seated? What kinds of conflicts can they start that will undermine his effectiveness? I'm sure they're talking. Well, about it, it would right it now. would involve, I think, a lot of uh, uh, dead people, uh, Soros false flag ops. Uh, they light off a, a low-yield nuke in a, in a, a medium-sized American city and blame it on Iran and challenge Trump to do something to get even with Iran. We'll never. If there's a nuke that goes off in this country, people, please understand, you will not know. I will not know who really did it. This is like 9-11. Fortunately, we have the Internet, and we have figured out long ago who did 9-11. We know who did it. But if there's a nuke, and the rush to judgment is put on us by the mainstream media, Americans will demand revenge. Watch. All they got to do is kill, like, let's say they killed 3,000 on 9-11, but they killed 10,000, 20,000 with a, a dirty nuke or something, a dirty bomb, uh, Amer and blamed it on Iran. That would be it. Then you got Russia. Russia won't let that uh, war on Iran happen. I don't. I just don't believe it. Well, there's there's... There's ways that Trump can counteract all that. One of them is to start, you know, bringing these factories back, getting people jobs, and and uh, working out, you know, marketing arrangements with uh, absolutely. You know, give, can, give him a year. Let's give him a year. Give him 90 days before you even begin to start uh, judging the man. Give him a year. Let's see how many jobs are created. Let's see how much infrastructure work is actually plugged in. And I think if it's substantial, you're going to see an approval rating of Donald Trump run up around 70, 75 percent in that year. You wait and see. Wait and see. Well, there's another factor. Uh, you know, the, the, it was a pop, emerging populism that put him in office and the people's desire for a change in the economy and jobs because the, the average American working person, their, their purchasing value has been going down for the last 20 years. Right. They knew this was their last chance, Preston. They knew it. Yeah. And so I think um, I, I, I think there's a possibility that the populism that elected Trump will also end up protecting him because it's starting to look like a lot of the people in the military and intel are have sort of trans been transformed by this populism, sort of jumped on the populist movement, and I I'm not so sure that they're going to uh, take orders from the old cabal burnouts. That are in place because if they know that Trump is is uh, against them, I think they're going to do what's right. This is going to strengthen the, the the ability to stand up and do the right thing for a lot of the people in the military and in, in I hope that, so. My, and remember, yeah. this is going to emanate 
from a, a vastly spayed and neutered military that has been culled since the Clintons were in, in the White House. They they pull all the key patriots out that they they could, scared them out, killed off some of them. So yeah, there's still patriotism in the military. And let's see let's see what happens. Better. And so that gives uh, all of us a great edge, and, and those people know who they are, and I'm very grateful to them. It's a lot of work. Uh, it's, it's sometimes, honestly, it is so much pressure on, on yours truly, and I, I can handle it. It's okay. Uh, that I, I literally sit here, and I sometimes can't type well. I can't, my mind is four or five stories ahead, and I can't, I have to stop and back way up, rewind, and go A, B, D, L, R. I have to find the keys and slow down. Uh, it's just too much. It's, it's, it's crazy. Anyway, that's the times, sign of the times. And next year, if we can just get Trump sworn in, depth of knowledge into the dark, secret world of, uh, well, we'll just call it the cult and control, mass mind manipulation, social engineering, programming, the works. Preston knows it. He's been there. He's got incredible sources and always read his material. It's on the left side of the home page right there in his columnist box. Hello, my friend. How are you? Welcome back. Hi, Brett. I, I want to thank you for having me on, Jeff, but I want to give you a compliment, too, because, as you know, I play a little game with you trying to send you articles hoping that you won't have them yet, and <laughs> very rarely do I ever succeed. So I don't know what your sources are, but you're on top of everything. Well, I've got some some handful of wonderful people who who watch and send things that they know matter. Then they could easily push you around or do whatever whatever they wanted That's anyway. Right. So, you know. did you see the video of uh, of of she being embraced by Chelsea, who ran up and hugged her when they told her, "You've got it. You've won." On election night, did you see that video? Well, and Bill, I saw part of it where and Bill, Bill was jumping up and down. Bill comes walking in from screen left, uh, wanting to be included in the hug. No, I don't feel sorry for him. She was, she wouldn't even look at him. She was hugging Chelsea, and the, the guy stopped short, Bill Clinton, rapist, and started literally, I think he made three jumps, little jump, little hops up yeah, in the air, yeah. like a little kid would do, a child. Happy little child. Next year is going to be one of the most incredible years in American and world political history, Western world political history, period. Well, it's a fact that um, it's fa- very fast-moving, and and uh, the establishment, and when I say establishment, I don't just mean the, the uh, Democrats. I mean the Republicans and the Democratic Party leaders and the major media, which they all work for the uh, satanic pedophile cabal with the whether they know it or not, only the higher Whether they know it or not, yeah. absolutely. And of course, they, they were stunned. They were they were convinced. They were told it was wrapped up that uh, Hillary was the establishment candidate. And of course, they they believed that she was sick and she was in a limited role, and that she would get yeah. in and yeah. and that. Preston James has stopped by for his monthly visit. I wish we could have him on more often, but at least we get to spend one night a week with him and hear some of the things he has to say. This man has a level of understanding and a 